Okay, this is another update on the 3D printed Polish Enigma machine. Um, I'm sorry it's been a little while, but I've been on holiday and then I went away and then I've just started a new job and that's taking up quite a bit of my time, um, as well as a few other projects. And it was one of the other projects that um, kind of made me progress a bit more on the Enigma machine. That's what I'm going to talk about today. So one of the things I've been thinking about is how to make all of the flat contacts that go on the rotors and also on the entry wheel. So the way this works is on each rotor one side has flat contacts and the other side has little spring-loaded contacts. When the rotors are all stacked together the spring-loaded contacts press against the flat contacts on this side. Now the thing was how was I going to make all those contacts? And my original thought was to machine them up out of short lengths of uh, TIG welding wire. So I was going to cut up a whole lot of little little pieces and then glue them into here basically to make the the flat contacts. Now someone I chat to online who's also um, 3D printing his own model of the Enigma, he had an idea which he mentioned to me, um, one of his thoughts on what to use for the contacts. And his idea was to use rivets, um, basically pop rivets like these. Now, these are almost right, so he's definitely on the right track, but these wouldn't work for a number of reasons. Um, one, they're not flat. You can see the, the surface of the rivet there, it's slightly curved. And two, uh, the idea would be, this is, this is a rivet before it's been popped, um, what you can do is you can actually pull out the, the central steel part, this piece of steel, and what you're left with is the little aluminium rivet part. And, and you could theoretically use these as the contacts, but the problem is one, they've got the hole in the middle, uh, two, they're not flat, and three, being aluminium, you can't solder, the, oh, solder to them. So it's very hard to attach wires to them. Um, I should have realized when he mentioned that, that I kind of already knew what the answer was, but it wasn't until a bit later uh, when I was actually looking for what are known as blind rivets um, for another project I'm working on, which is a little vintage car. And so this car is made with a, an aluminium body, and some of the pieces need to be riveted on. And being a vintage car, you can't use pop rivets, they're far too modern. So what you use are what's called blind rivets, and effectively a blind rivet is like a pop rivet, but it's it's solid. And you poke it through the hole, and using a hammer and dolly and a rivet set and various tools, you, you flatten the other end of the rivet, and that's what clinches the two pieces of metal together. So I was actually looking online for aluminium blind rivets, and what I came across when looking for those was these. Now these are copper blind rivets, and they're also flat-headed blind rivets. And if you look at one of these things, I've got one here, basically that's exactly the sort of copper contact I need for this Enigma machine. Um, the diameter is pretty much the same as in a real Enigma machine. It's about 4 millimeters across, 4 millimeters, 4.2, something like that. Um, the diameter of the shaft is 2 millimeters. I actually have the bag of them here. Uh, M2 by 8. And so what I did is I decided I'd use these. Because they're ready-made, I could just buy them. I think it was $11 for 300 of them. Uh, $11 US from China. So what I've been doing is I've been reprinting some of my parts. So this is actually the cover of the entry wheel. And you can see what I've done is I've printed it so that there is a, a two millimeter hole and a little a little recess for the head of the rivet. So the rivet just fits through and it's a push fit into that. And you can see that sits pretty much flush. Also, being copper, it's very easy to solder wires to them. So uh, this is the actual wire I'm using. Uh, it's a very thin gauge. I can't remember exactly what the gauge is and I can't read it from here. I think it's 26 gauge. Um, very thin, very flexible. This is silicone coated wire. And um, what I can do is pre-solder 
all of the wires onto the little rivets and then the rivets just poke through the hole. What I'm probably going to do is actually glue them in place with a little bit of epoxy or possibly just super glue under the head just to hold them and they'll push through and then the idea will be that all of the rivets this is sat down on something smooth and flat like a piece of glass so so the rivets are all flush with the the surface um, off the wheel there and I can also then put a piece of heat shrink over this uh, to further lock that in place and to provide a bit of strain relief on the um, on the cable here so that's basically how I'm going to do those and I may end up having to sand the surface to make it very smooth so that the contacts can can easily rub across it um, I found one of the best ways to do that uh, this being PLA which is a vegetable oil based plastic is to wet sand it with a little bit of vegetable oil and then you can smooth it very very cleanly and very smooth uh, make it very smooth so I've remodeled the entry wheel as you can see and I need to modify my model for the the rotors so I'll have to reprint another five of these uh, with the new pockets but that's that's easy enough to do um, one thing you can you can probably hear the printer in the background we'll have a look at that in a second but I've just started an, a whole new reel of black filament I, I ran out and I've had quite a bit of trouble getting this this particular reel to print properly so these were some of my early test pieces and you can see uh, that the surface finish on them is very rough now I spent quite a while playing around with temperatures and speeds and things um, re-leveled the printer that sort of stuff but I still had a problem and in the end what I found was I had to reduce the flow rate uh, down to 75 percent to to be able to get you know, a nice clean surface finish on it so I'm not quite sure what's going on there I, I measured the diameter of the filament and it seems the same as um, as the, the filament I always use it's from the same supplier it looks like the same brand but for some reason there's just more of it coming out um, now I've adjusted that that's fixed that problem so what we can do is um, I'll stop this and I'll reposition the camera and we'll talk a little bit about the printer so as you can see the printer is busy printing apart um, what I'm actually printing there is I've been working on my 3d model a bit more and um, have figured out how to print the, the, the proper cover that's going to going to fit and this is actually printing the back part of the cover now that's that piece there so that's about a I think it's got about another seven hours to go something like that um, as I say this homemade printer of mine isn't fast but it gets there eventually uh, it's a bit tricky to see in the video but I've got a nice smooth surface on that now that I've adjusted the flow rate so yeah, I'm really not sure what's going on there, why this particular filament is, is flowing differently to, to all the other filament I've used, but this is what you have to do when you're 3D printing sometimes, is fiddle around with settings and, and play about till you get a nice result. So one thing I've done on the printer that I wanted to point out is I've, I've kind of redesigned the, the shroud. Um, previously if you've seen any of the other videos I, I had a, a cooling shroud that was like this this was just a model of Thingiverse and I had that sort of sticking out at an awkward angle and it was quite big and chunky and it would get in the way so I ended up um, designing my own ba based on the same idea of the little the little circular shroud with the, with the ducts um, but now I've got a bit more experience with 3d modeling I was able to print my own create my own version uh, the first one I had the, the shroud was a little bit too small so there was no airflow so I've made it a bit bigger and um, then I, I reprinted that out um, one of the tricky things is when you don't have the shroud uh, I had to take off the old one and then print the new one which meant I had no cooling so the first few models I printed out ended up fairly rough so what you end up having to do is print the first few knowing that they're going to be rough um, 
get them good enough so that you can put it on the machine and then use those to print nice versions which you can then swap out and put on the machine so that, that was one of my my tests uh, it's in two parts basically so the, the two parts concertina together or slide together so you can adjust the um, the height so that's one of the mods I've done on the machine just to make it a bit a bit cleaner and a bit neater looking um, and just also it's a lot a lot more rigid so it doesn't sort of wobble around when the printer's moving so as I say I've been working on my model now let's see if I can shift the camera around again let's see um, so this is my my model where I've basically uh, modeled the whole machine more or less and I've done most of the parts now uh, including the keys it's not a working model theoretically I should be able to to turn it into a working model but the good thing about modeling it like this is I was actually then able to to see exactly where the cover was going to interfere with my mechanism and that allowed me to redesign the cover and I had to design these little pockets in it um, which will have little covers over them um, but that's the beauty of the 3d modeling is it, it allows you to do that and of course you can um, turn pieces on and off to have a look at the model and see how it all fits together so the idea is eventually I will release these these models but I'm not finished yet and because I've made so many changes I really need to reprint the whole thing to make sure it's still accurate because I've been remodeling it as I've gone along when I've, I've realized I could model things in a slightly better way so that's kind of where that's at at the moment um, all the major parts are there as I say I'm, I'm busy printing out the the new uh, top cover which is which is this piece and once I've done that, the printing is all complete. Um, I still need to make all the key shafts and I guess then start wiring the thing up. So hopefully with my new, my new little rivets and bits and pieces, that should be a lot easier to do.